All right. Well, it is 6 o'clock Central Time. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started if that works for everyone. We want to make sure we optimize everyone's time. We want to thank you all for joining uh, this uh, very informative and interactive webinar where we can really help create a roadmap and a strategy for your program. I'm going to go around the room and just introduce ourselves uh, before we start. And then I'll go through agenda and we have got a great um, a great um, agenda for you. And it looks like we already have a question, Eric, from the beginning here. Corey has a hand up, I think. It, there is not a question in the question and answer box, Jen. Okay, perfect. All right, well, Corey, uh, if you need something, go ahead and uh, put a question into the question and answer box, and I'll go through that. Um, but I'm going to introduce myself to start and then go around the table. Um, again, thanks for joining us. My name is Jen Olson. I'm the president and co-founder of Interactive Health Technologies. And uh, we started the company back in 2011. We have over 12,000 schools around the world in 22 countries. And we are just um, excited. One of our big passions is to help teachers um, navigate the, this process and where to find the funding and then obviously providing the tools and resources and support to optimize their program. Um, I'll let Helen Wagner go next, who's our guest today on the line. Helen. Thank you. I'm Helen Wagner. I'm the coordinator of Health in Humble ISD. That H is silent. And um, I have to say, I'm awfully glad that we're doing this tonight, seeing as though our Astros will be playing tomorrow night, game six. So anyway, welcome, everyone. And I'm excited to uh, get this, this webinar started. Thanks, Helen. We really appreciate it. Yes, um, Umble is down in the Houston area, and we do say go Astros. Um, IHT is based in Austin, and Eric Larson, um, who is um, our regional vice president, is based in Denver. And Eric, do you want to just say a few words about yourself? Yes, my name is Eric Larson. Uh, like Jen mentioned, I am the regional vice president for IHT. I'm a former physical education teacher and former PE coordinator in Denver Public Schools. And after I retired from Denver Public Schools, I worked for about three and a half years as the National Physical Education and Physical Activity Advisor for the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Perfect. Well, um, well, we're going to go around the table, and I'm going to really start. We're going to just kind of go through a quick agenda and what our goals are of today. What we really hope to provide you in the next 60 minutes is to provide the details on the available funding sources and the opportunities that are right, usually right within your district, and certainly um, we'll go into some creative ways we can go outside the district. But today is really going to focus the first part on the Every Student Succeeds Act, and particularly the Title IV Part A funding that was allocated um, a couple years ago, and we want to talk a little about what that is, what is the annual state funding and allocation um, across the country, and how Umble ISD secured their funding, and Helen's going to go into those strategies and key steps um, that helped her get her ESSA funding. <coughs> then we're going to move into technology and innovation, um, innovation funds. Um, Eric's going to talk about how the Denver Public Schools secured funding. Um, being the PE coordinator in Denver, he secured over $7 million, whether it was PEP grants, um, foundations, community organizations, um, or technology funds. And so he's going to really talk about how you can go after those. And really right now is the perfect time to, to put that request in, and we'll explain why. Um, and then we're going to focus on some of the language and some of your district technology and the district strategy and how to, again, kind of find out and, and speak that lingo. Um, at the end, we're going to go ahead and provide a funding request roadmap. We're going to, we have tons of resources for IHT to help you create your plan. Um, we're going to talk about the timeline hope you get educated and informed with a lot of different resources out there. Um, and if anyone that you you know of is interested in joining this webinar and, and is not quite in it yet, um, this is the link that you can send them um, to get them on board So as we get started here. Okay. Um, one of the uh, key things of how to ask us questions, again, we would love to ha um, have you ask questions as we go along. Um, we've got plenty of places to stop and pause and answer those after each section. So please um, put a question and answer in, and we'd, be lo we'd love to answer a question as we go. 
I'm going to talk just a little bit about IHT's purpose and what um, we founded the company for, and it really is about student growth and how do we empower ownership of health and well-being through a daily, personalized, heart-centered uh, approach through learning and support. So IHT really focuses on how are we not only you know, having student growth, but oh, by the way, we have all this data to prove that it's working. So through the use of several different ways that we do that, um, we really understood at the very beginning of the company that technology has really taken education into a, a new era. Um, it's really there to increase effectiveness of student learning, to connect data, efficient assessment, instant access to information, and how do we build a better network between our stakeholders, whether they're students, teachers, parents, and the community. And that's what technology really is, is about, and to try and leverage that, not only um, in our schools, but particularly in our physical education classrooms, is what IHT is really trying to create, um, the future of education through that personalized ownership of health and well-being. What we do, so... Our main, um, the heart of our program is heart rate. We truly believe that the biomarker of heart rate is the most objective way to truly show the health and the fitness of a child. We work from K through 12 and in higher education. We partnered with Adidas in 2015, and we spent about a year and a half creating the IHT zone. It's a risk-based heart rate monitor. It is the only monitor in education specifically designed for students. Um, we couple that with the assessment software. We just are honored to say that we just became the official assessment platform for the Presidential Youth Fitness Program, the PYFP. We partnered with the Amateur Athletic Union this summer to help bring the annual fitness testing um, in a very simplified way through our software and then connecting that to academics, attendance, behavioral health and physical health because everything is really interlinked. We have curriculum resources that accompany that and of course the professional development, the ongoing support that's so necessary. So not just buying a product but having a partnership throughout the way is what IHT does. And the ways that schools are really using the IHT technology and we want to kind of plant this seed and I'll come back to the slide at the end. But our main um, source of the way IHT is impacting our schools is through physical education classes. Um, we also work heavily in waiver programs and online physical education. If that's something that your district has, IHT is an incredible solution for that. Blended learning. We are just now getting into working with schools using the monitor all day long. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. But as we look at the whole child, whole school, whole community model, like that whole child model, you know, interlinking the physical and the mental health is so critical. Um, we have great programs using the monitors and the assessment software with our special needs and adaptive PE in recess, um, proving academic, uh, the movement through the academic classrooms throughout the day. Um, and in other subject areas as well. So those are kind of the ways that schools are using IHT at the moment. So let's go into what is ESSA and what is Title IV Part A funding. Before I do that, are there any questions that um, have come up, Eric? Okay, great, hearing nothing, that's perfect. So let's just talk a little about what is ESSA. ESSA was is the Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, it includes a very flexible block grant program, um, which this past year was authorized at $1.6 billion for the fiscal year 2020. It authorizes activities in three areas for provide students with a well-rounded education, supporting safe and healthy uh, students in school mental health, drug and violence prevention, training on drama-informed practices and health and physical education. So physical education, mental health, safe and healthy schools are written right into this. Um, the last part is supporting the effective use of technology. So IHT really has become an ideal solution to capturing this funding. For an example, in Texas, we have funding that is um, – it's about $103 million in Texas schools. It's about $20 per student. 
Um, so we're going to go through kind of how the state decided to allocate their funding um, based on a couple different ways. One, some states allocated the funding based on Title I, which is our low social economic students. So if you're a Title I school, this is even, you're even more, um, have a greater opportunity to capture the Title IV funding because of that. Um, and if you do receive that funding, and Helen can kind of talk a little bit about this, but how that money is allocated between well-rounded education, safe and healthy schools, and then on 60% can be spent on technology. So there's been a huge increase in this. The House Appropriations Committee voted to increase the funding by $11.7 billion. Um, and the reason is, is because we're leveraging technology, we're connecting to the whole child, the last piece that's so critical is, the, is an ability to measure the effectiveness of that. And that's really where IHC has put our focus on is, yes, we, we're, we have all this data, but it's not just about the data. It's showing how is that student growing from year to year. Um, and when you have an ability to do that, funding obviously increases because the federal government knows that the money is not only being well spent, but that we're seeing progress. So the money continues to increase every year. Some people, you know, say, well, you know, I didn't get my SF funding. I'm not going to be in it. This, this literally replenishes every July 1st. So um, Helen will go into kind of the allocation in Humble. Um, we work with another school district in Irving, and they are now on their fourth. They just got allocated their fourth round of ESSA funding. Because they had so much data, every single year their federal grant director is like, you know what, you are proving this program. You can have the 50000 again this year. So their physical education department has been transformed in the Irving ISD under Sandy Craven's leadership. So as I kind of finish up just a little bit on what ESSA is and the allocation process by state, the blue states, if you're in one of the blue states, um, that is a formula that is literally uh, divided equally between all states, I mean, between all districts. So in Texas, as I mentioned, there's $103 million that is allocated between every state. It comes down to about $20 per student per year. So if you're sitting here thinking like, well, what does my district have? All you need to do is take the total number of students within your district or within your school and times that times 20. And that's what is put into your district every single year for ESSA Title IV funding. The other formulas, and it's a little bit hard to read, um, but they are, there's a competitive grant program. The purple is a formula based on Title I. Um, there's, the yellow is the competitive grant program. And then the orange, uh, those states have decided to transfer their Title I funding, their Title IV funding to Title I or Title II, which is also a great, and therefore kind of go into how to secure Title II funding. Um, and then the green states are, they've decided sort of an alternative way. But as you can see, most of the states have decided to provide some equity between all of the districts and just divide the funding equally. And this is a chart that kind of shows what that allocation is. Again, we're going to send out this recording, so you'll be able to see what your requirement is. This was actually from the 2018-19, but the new one obviously has been added another $11 billion. As you can see in Texas, um, it was $98 million last year. This year, it's 103. So every state has gone up in this number. And again, if you're in one of these blue states, your district has ESSA Title IV funding. It's just a matter of making the request and going after it. And that's where IHC comes in to play. So on that note, that's kind of the ESSA overview. And I want to just stop here and see if there are any questions. Eric, any questions? No questions yet, Dr. Jen. OK, OK, perfect. Okay. Great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Helen and Abel ISD, and she's going to talk a little about her own personal experience of how she navigated and was successful in this process. Okay. So as you can see with the picture, um, this was taken very recently, and the beauty to this photo is, is basically the power of perseverance, and it can and it does work. From the beginning of our process to look at securing this type of funding, it took about six months. And so I'm going to encourage you to definitely start 
to try to secure those funds early. Jen earlier said something about the timeline and the timeline for this year, and it doesn't matter what state you're in, the federal uh, timeline is the start date was 7-1-2019 and the ending date is 9-30-2020. So just to keep everybody up to date on that, the sooner that you go out and seek and try to secure those funds, the sooner your kids will be able to um, utilize those products and you'll have your staff development, everything in place so that then you can roll this out within the school year. So I'm going to encourage you to definitely um, seek funding very soon. So when we look at the next slide, the keys to the uh, successful strategy, first, make sure that when, you're have, when you place your request, you know about your product. You're, you're very well versed in it. You understand, you've done research, you've looked at different products that are on the market. And I have to say, I, I also reached out to many of my uh, trusted colleagues to find out what they, what they knew about the different products that were out on the marketplace. And then it basically boils down to choosing a product that best fits the needs of your student and matches what your district uh, is looking for. An example of that would be that I, I specifically wanted a product that had a simple design and that it was easy to use. And I felt as though the IHT monitor monitors met that mark. So the level, and I wanna also say that the level of customer support and service with IHT has been tremendous from the very beginning when I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about the product and they have walked me through every step of the way. So that's an important piece when you are looking at a product is to know that the customer service is going to be there and support you. The next piece of my strategy is looking at the implementation. You want to go back, Jen? That was my how I requested. The next one is implementation. Um, make sure that you have developed a timeline with goals and action steps and people that will be responsible for helping you to put this practice into place. Um, all the way from a design team to your district ad administration, campus leaders, and we also have included um, our at-risk counselors at several of our campuses. The last piece you can see is data and reporting to prove it's working. Um, with this product, <clears throat> make sure that it's going to align with the state assessments. And Jen said earlier that that's going, they're going to use this as part of the presidential fitness assessment. Ours ties in beautifully with our state assessment, which is the STAR, and to make sure that it helps measure academic performance and improvement. Those are the questions I was asking myself before I began the, the looking for that product. How will the data be useful for students and staff regarding self-awareness and self-regulation? So when Jen uh, referenced the whole child, one thing that we are doing in our district is we're very in tune with the social emotional learning piece and the whole child. We want to understand the mind and body connections as it's evidenced by observing and tracking heart rates as it pertains to the level of emotionality, meaning that we're, we're tracking the progress on a five point scale. And of course the efficacy of coping strategies that our students will be able to use outside of school as well as inside of school. Example would be our breathing techniques, our yoga poses, flow, relaxation, and restoration. So when we get to the next um, slide, which is number, what number are we on, Jim? Uh, Jim? Says, We're on uh, edu educate yourself and understand your district system in place. Okay, that is under, hold on, if y'all don't mind, just give me a moment, please. 21. So what's important here is that you educate when it says yourself and understand your district system in place. What is the process for requesting your funding? 
in our case, um, I knew that that fell under our state, our director of state and federal programs. And what I did at the onset was reach out to her. Many of us are districts are very large and that that might just be they definitely are going to be the department that's going to deal with the ESSA funding. Uh, smaller districts, it may not be a director. It might just be a coordinator, a specialist, but whomever it is, it's anyone that's going to handle your state and federal programs. And I encourage you um, to definitely reach out to them as soon as you can, find out who they are, and having that plan in place, like I had mentioned uh, on the previous screen. Important, too, is keeping those directors and those folks definitely informed and, and along the journey with you. Uh, when we ordered our product and it finally came in, uh, I invited those folks to come in and actually take a look at the product, see what it looks like. And I will tell you, they were like kids in a, in a candy store um, at Christmas time, seeing new, new toys. They looked at them and they said, this, this just looks cool. And I said, well, this is just the beginning. And I want you to, you're going to follow our journey. And, and most importantly, you're going to see how it's going to start to change lives for our kids and, and the way that kids think about themselves and how they uh, can take care of themselves out in the general public and, and in school and in our settings. So the next slide is keys to a successful strategy. Make sure that you reach out to your technology department uh, in, in, in securing that these IHT software meets the tech requirements that you have in the platform within your district. I asked IHT um, as well to provide the specs requirements for to me so that I could forward that to our director of technology. And um, let's see. that was helpful. They, like I said, from the word go, IHT has been very supportive and they sent that template to me, whatever the specs were, and I sent them straight to our technology director. Once you know that that product has met the uh, tech specs, it's important that you direct the vendor. If you'll go back, Jim, please, to slide number 22, there you go. It says make sure the product you're looking into is an approved vendor. And I know that in the state of Texas, it seems like we have to move mountains to make this happen, but it is very, it's, it's important and you're not gonna be able to purchase any of the products without stepping your vendor through this process. And so you will find uh, information on that at a lot of uh, district websites under departments and I would look for purchasing the purchasing department and they will have information on their website on how to become a vendor and the vendor forms and then once the vendor begins to fill out there's usually an initial screening process and then what I receive is a notice from the purchasing department that says that that vendor has begun the process of applying to become approved in the district. So what I always ask the vendor to do is to please let me know when you have submitted all of the paperwork. So then I can kind of put a bug in the ear over at purchasing and say, I know now that my vendor has applied to be approved and can you all please keep me apprised of that and where we're at in the process of them becoming an approved vendor. Okay. This slide just basically uh, explains where I went to in technology services. They always have their plan as well. What, um, what are their goals? What are, what are they able to use money for? And so I, uh, apprise myself of what it is that they had in their goals and action plans as well. And the next slide is our district improvement plan. 
What's very, very important to remember is whatever you're doing, align it with what your district and this their strategic plan is also saying needs to be done. So what I did was, is I took, we went from that federal level with the ESSA funding to the state level. And at the state level, the uh, state of Texas has public education objectives. One of them is providing a well-balanced and appropriate curriculum that it will be provided to all students. So I began to look now from, I went from the federal level to the district level, to the state level, uh, also at the state level, there's an objective for technology that talks about increasing the effectiveness of student learning and instructional no management, staff development and administration. And then once I finished at the state level and finding those objectives, this is all part of my plan that I had to go forth with to our director of federal and state programs. I went to our district plan like you're seeing here on this screen. So you will take some time to read through your district plan and make sure where can I craftily find that these monitors and purchasing these would fit into our plan. And so where I found it in ours was under school culture and climate because it talks about every child needing to be developed intellectually, artistically, physically, and socially. So I think basically what you're doing is you're just going through that plan and you're looking to find the best fit for these monitors and kids to be physically active. The other area that I found in our plan was under curriculum instruction and assessment, where they said the staff needs additional materials and targeted professional development so that every student will engage in rigorous coursework and here we are back to what the federal level said, well-rounded learning activities. So I think attaching yourself to those terms and that terminology is critical. All right, so I'm gonna tell you, don't, don't wait until the last minute, um, start now. And remember that I said it took us six months to get to that picture that where we started, where you can see us actually using those monitors in one of our yoga classes. So start now, be proactive, um, begin as, as soon as you can. Any kind of purchases that are going to re require monies being accrued at more than $24,999, just FYI, you also have to have that board approved. So once again, uh, that takes a little bit of time to get on that, on their agenda to be board approved for that. The, if we're gonna wrap up now, so let's see. We talked about the timeline of when the money needs to be spent. You have until, and I'm gonna say this because this is federally, you have from 7-1-2019 to 9-30-2020 try not to wait until the last minute to ask for that money. There's a lot of competition. People are becoming more and more aware of this funding, the Title IV Part A, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that, but be confident and know that IHT is definitely there to help and support you. Um, the sooner you request these funds, the sooner your students can begin tracking their progress and changing their mindset about the how-tos of living an active lifestyle. And I believe now we're gonna hand it over to see if there are, you have any questions. We did have a couple okay. questions and I wanted to make sure I clarify. I did answer the questions uh, in the Q&A section, but um, just in case, uh, there might be need a little bit of clarification. One of the buckets for Title IV Part A is a well-rounded education. That money is authorized by the federal government, and then it is allocated to the state level. At the state level, there is decisions that are made to where that money is going to go. 
in the well-rounded education buckets, there are 17 content areas that are vying for that money. And physical education and health are part of that 17. So uh, as much as you can at the state level, you need to have a voice for physical education and health. Otherwise, that, that money will go to other areas. If they have representatives at the state level that are um, vying for that money and making a case for that money, then uh, physical education and health will be left out. So that's just how it works at the state level. And then once they make those decisions on priority at the state level, then the money is uh, allocated to the district levels. But then the districts have to stay in line with the decisions made at the state level. So again, you have to be a proponent. You have to lobby for your area. And then another question that came up was, uh, is this money, can it be used for community programs? Uh, no, this money is for um, school districts for education. Helen, do you want to I think add that's all we have. I, I'm, I'm going to second the motion with Eric on that about being the advocate for, for your programming. Many times um, we are underfunded in physical education. And I can, I can tell you that I know that, that that is very, very common. And thank goodness for Title IV Part A, because as when that came along, it really did open up the uh, area for us to be able to ask for and get additional funding, because like I said, we're very underfunded, uh, typically in physical education. So, Definitely be an advocate, stay in tune with your state health and physical education uh, committees and be that voice and definitely reach out to your colleagues as well that, that are active in their state or in your state organizations as well. And I'm, I'll just add to that, you know, just having the courage, uh, you know, we've talked to a lot of uh, physical education administrators, and I'll use Sandy Cravens um, and Irving as an example. She had already gotten a little bit of funding through the district, and when the ESSA Title IV Part A came up, she kind of just thought, well, that's for somebody else. Physical education never gets this kind of money. But she you know, basically took a two-page document that we're going to share with you at the end and took it into our federal grant director. Uh, she had gone in the first time and he said, Neil, this isn't quite hitting it. Why don't you come back with something that's measurable and, you know, equitable for all students. And so we wrote up and we helped her write just literally a two-page document. And she took in some videos and some supporting documents, but literally she said in about four minutes, her federal grant director looked at it and said, this is perfect. But she had to have the courage to do it. And so, you know, there are so many other subjects vying for this funding. The good news is, is that it's a pretty well-kept secret right now. Um, so if you can get in line and act quick, it probably is still available, at least part of it or, you know, a portion of it. But, you know, it, 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 it's not if but when the other 18 subjects start making their request. So again, this is the perfect time to, to get in line and to hopefully get in the queue in as close to the front as you can, if not at the front. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Eric's gonna talk about um, a little bit some other funding sources out there. There is so much money within the district, especially as it relates to whole child, personalized learning, um, and leveraging technology. And so Eric's gonna tap in to talk about how to tap into some of those other funding buckets that are right within your district beyond ESSA Title IV. Eric. Uh, Helen, I really appreciate you sharing your perspective as a physical education and health coordinator. Um, that was my role in Denver Public Schools for 13 years. And during that time, I really concentrated on reaching out and developing relationships. Reach out to your IT department your technology uh, director. So what happened in Denver Public Schools was we received um, PEP grants, uh, three different PEP grants, over a period of about 14 years. 
uh, I'm sorry, over a period of 13 years. And during that time, I was able to develop a relationship with the technology director because we were looking to purchase heart rate monitors for our fitness centers. We had brand new fitness centers that we were able to build at eight high schools through funding from um, foundations. But we needed the heart rate monitors in the fitness centers. And so uh, we put together um, a proposal uh, for the PEP grant, but we needed the help of the technology director to help us um, put the RFP together. And so the, uh, that developed a good relationship with the technology director. And then when it came time at the end of the school year, in years that we didn't get the PEP grant, the, uh, I would reach out to the technology director and said, and I'd ask, you know, have you spent all your money for Chromebooks and for infrastructure? Um, do you have any money left? And most times, uh, there was money that uh, we were able to use in physical education because it met their goal of providing technology for students in Denver Public Schools. Um, so that's just one way that you can uh, reach out and communicate and develop those relationships. And Jen, if you could go to the next slide. If I can, Eric, I'd like to add something yes. to that. Uh, when, when you're asking and telling folks to, to reach out, also be know that you can reach out to, and I think you you might hit on this, but your grant writers in your districts as well. That was another yes. place that we reached out early um, because we have an education foundation that is funded uh, by our teachers and our community. And we thought, you know what? We're going to give it a try there first before I went to the to the ESSA funding. And we were successful on a very on a smaller scale, but that kind of opened the door to the larger plan and program. So just wanted to add that. Yes, and they have a time that they have to spend down that money. Uh, most times it's by June 30th. And so uh, before they replenish for the next school year, so if you catch them at the right time, you might be able to obtain funding in that way. Uh, also, the wellness coordinator in your district, um, because they come up with the wellness plan for the district, and um, that's federally mandated that the, every school district has a wellness plan. Uh, the wellness coordinator in Denver Public Schools, I had developed a good relationship with her through meetings. and. Um, she came to me and said, you know, there's a uh, grant opportunity that you might be interested. It's called the Health Diversity Grant, and uh, it's from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. And she said, um, you know, there hasn't been a physical education program in the state that has applied for this grant, but you might take a look at it. So I did look at it, and um, one of the main objectives was uh, that was written into the proposal was obesity risk factor reduction. And I said, we can do that in physical education. Uh, and then looking at it a little more, it uh, said, you know, to increase moderate to vigorous physical activity. Well, that's what we do in physical education. So I put together the grant application with some people on my team and um, we were able to receive that grant for seven seventy or uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for over a three year period. So that's just another way of connecting. You never know when it's going to come back, you know, just talking at um, meetings with people in other departments. Uh, that's just what, what happens. And also the grant writers in the district, and Helen just mentioned that, develop that relationship because they know when grants are, are available and they'll reach out and say, you might be interested in this one. This might work for your area. And as far as protocol reaching out, uh, I, I don't know if there's so much as far as protocol. I think it's just making sure that you have that relationship, that you've made contact, 
Um, you know, if it's um, teachers, you might check with your coordinator first. Um, but again, uh, I would encourage teachers also, not just administrators, to reach out to the grant writers in the district. Then there's also other types of funding that are available. Uh, Medicaid's a real good one. We worked with, uh, in Denver, the OT and PT department, developed a nice partnership, and uh, we were able to, to apply for Medicare funding for the adapted um, students, and for, it was for the adapted physical education program, the special needs students, rather. And um, we applied for funding, and we were able to get heart rate monitors that way because the, of the importance of monitoring heart rates uh, of adapted students in physical education. So there's another way to reach out and look for that type of funding. Um, mental health, SEL funding, um, that can be available within your district at East Elementary School in Littleton, Colorado. They have a program on behavior intervention. Uh, the students there with uh, the work of Kim Bailey, their counselor, the students are wearing heart rate monitors all day, and it's for behavior intervention. This way they can have the heart rate monitor on and look at it, the face of the monitor, and they can see what their heart rate is. They can see if there's spikes in the heart rate when there shouldn't be spikes. You know, it's good to have the spikes up into the moderate and vigorous zone during physical education, during recess time. But uh, the counselor and the social worker there at East Elementary School can also check their chart and their graph at the end of the day to see if there's other times there's spikes. Uh, for an example, we had a student there at uh, East Elementary School that was going into moderate and vigorous during physical education and recess. But then late in the day, this student would spike up to 138, 140 beats per minute. And they noticed this when they looked at the data at the end of the day and had a discussion with the student and found out that it was an abusive situation at home and that um, student was anxious about going home and so uh, that's the reason for the spike in the heart rate in the afternoon. And they were able to work through that situation and really give support for that student. Um, Lisa McVicker, a teacher at Fossil Ridge in um, Fort Collins at Cooter School District, she does the online physical education and she uses the heart rate monitors through our app and she uh, provides that uh, education for those students using the IHT heart rate monitors. Um, she, she purchased uh, 42 of those and that's how many students are doing the online um, in, in Poudre School District. So that's just another way that uh, you can build technology in, you build in the IHT heart rate monitors into your program. Um, there's also uh, a teacher in uh, Seattle, Tony Bader, is doing a great job with the adaptive uh, PE program using IHT. And that way they can have the students look at their target heart rates and see what their beats are per minute uh, during activity for those special needs students. So those are just some examples of using the heart rate monitors. Uh, we've also had some teachers use it at recess time to uh, determine how much to, uh, or to track how much activity at recess. They'll do month-long studies. At this point in time, I am going to uh, open it up for questions and then turn it back over to Jan. Okay, great. Well, make sure to um, use the Q&A up at the top if you do have some questions. Um, we're going to kind of go into 
how can I be help? Um, so I want to, uh, Eric, you can mute yourself, please. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about some of the resources that IHP has available for you. One of them is an eight-page ESSA ebook, and this really is a roadmap. Um, and if I have presenters, maybe you can mute. That's just me, sorry. Um, so basically, this is a um, a resource guide that literally goes through the steps of how to make your plan, set goals, and plan with the resources that IT can provide, um, as long with some of the other supporting documents that Helen and Eric mentioned, you know, that are already within your district as far as aligning that. Um, so that's great. We're going to send this out to you afterwards so that you can have this booklet and, again, kind of gives you that strategy in making your own plan and personalizing it. Another thing that IHP provides, and we can go ahead and just customize this for you, is a two-page template. So this is literally 90% ready for you to go. Um, it's got the what, why, who, when, what's the cost, and literally in a two-page document that has your letterhead, um, kind of explains what the program is, and this is something you could take in this week to your principal, to your uh, coordinator, and say, here's my vision. So this is a Word document that we'll provide as well, that you just make your own, and then IHT can help you with further language um, for those grant opportunities and for those applications. The other thing is to build your network. So connect with the IHP community. We have a great site with all of our customers on it and supporters. Um, it's called Phys Ed Chatter, and it's on Facebook. So if you get the opportunity to connect, this sort of is a group that's been created for our users to share ideas, um, how things are working, what is best practices, how do I go after funding. So just sort of building the network if technology, specifically IHP, is something that you really want to get to, let's build that network around you of people who have already been there, who have already paved the way like Helen has in Humble. One of the other things you can do is you can sign up for IHP blog. Um, this was supposed to have a graphic of, El of Helen's um, um, program in Humble, but we're going to send that out to you. Um, Jay Plotkin, our content manager, just did a great job of a recent blog that really captures the essence of what Helen and her team and her leadership and her vision have created. Um, so you can sign up for those blogs at ihcusa.com and you can read that blog right on our resources page um, on the website. Another key is to not only get in tune with your state, AFERD, or SHAPE, but is to follow SHAPE America um, and become a member. It is so important, as we mentioned earlier, to get involved and be a voice. If we want change to happen, we have to be the change agents that make it happen first. And so getting involved and being a trailblazer, you know, the world is not going to meet us halfway, especially in physical education. So joining those groups and understanding um, and then having all of these resources right at your fingertips, Shape America does a great job of that, and you can get to their website at shapeamerica.org slash advocacy, and there's a whole section on ESSA funding that has a lot more resources available beyond what IT can provide. The other thing is get onto your oh, state yeah. department. Yes, yes, go ahead, Helen. Yeah. Okay, I thought, I thought Helen had a, a, to sign in there. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. Um, one of the other things is to get onto your state department. This is the Texas Education Agency. This came out on October 11th. Um, and they always post grant opportunities. And so this is a competitive grant opportunity. Um, they always have... Um, you know, basically a weekly wrap up from the commissioner or what's happening along the state. And it's just a great way to kind of understand what the state is thinking, how do we align our district to the state goals, and is there funding out there that you could go after. So this is a great opportunity to kind of get into the news bulletin within your local state. Um, TEA does a great job of having a lot of grant opportunities out there that you can go after, again, beyond what's within your district. One of my favorite um, sites is called understandingessa.org. And this is a really great weekly update. Um, and you can see the web link up at the top. Again, we're going to send this PowerPoint out to you. But just type in your state, go to your state, and you'll get up to the minute 
details about what the funding is being spent on, where your superintendents within your state are putting their money, how that money has been spent in the past. And so this is a great one to get onto to just sort of keep your pulse on ESSA funding. And then um, school, spe school Specialty does a great job as well. It's corporate.schoolspecialty.com. This used to be called, uh, this used to be through the Spark um, Grant Finder. But this is a great way beyond the, what's in your district. We always feel like within your district is the best place to start because there's just so much funding. It's so much more accessible. Going after some grant um, out in the, in the community, such as your local hospital or the local car dealership, um, they're competitive. They're not just the individuals within your school, but if you have an educational foundation or within, that's the place to go. But this is a great tool finder to kind of see what's right within your area based on physical education. And then follow ESSA updates on Twitter. Um, Twitter is also a great community of physical education or and also for ESSA. So at ESSA updates, Ed Week Teacher, Education Week, Shape America, and of course, IHT Spirit, um, and the hashtags as well. You'll be able to filter through a lot of the most current up-to-date things that have happened. Such as our friend Kim Ballard, who basically, you know, tweets out, um, you know, kind of what's going on. So that's sort of um, the um, end of our presentation. We are at 6.51 Central Time, and I want to see if there's any um, questions at this time or anything that, Helen, you would like to finish on. If we don't have any questions, Helen, why don't you have some final thoughts on wrapping up? Certainly. So I can just say that we're really at phase two of our journey with with our heart rate monitors. Um, we have them, we're piloting, and I, I would highly recommend that model to pilot in several at several campuses. We're using them at several elementary, several middle schools, one high school, and we're also using them at one of our behavioral centers for uh, our, I'm going to say, kids that are going to be transitioning into adult life. And so I'm very excited to see where these projects are going to go. And last week, when I, I I'm going to say, please stay active in the process, follow your folks, support them. If you don't have the answer, I know what I can do. I always can rely upon Jen and her team to help me with the answers. Know that you don't have to know every answer as the coordinator or the teacher. That's what IHT and their team is here to do to help you and step you through this process. And I would, I'm just gonna highly encourage everyone to, like we said, be vocal, be an advocate, be passionate about what you believe is right and good for your students. And what we're, what we're gonna see, I just know is gonna be instrumental in them having a change of mindset in how they view their own physical fitness and, and how they feel about themselves internally. I'm gonna end with this one thought of a young lady that um, I asked her last week at high school. I said, tell me what using this for the past several weeks, has it? have you felt any difference, any change in how you start your day because it's in a yoga class? And she said, I'm just gonna say that I suffer from anxiety and having this device on my wrist has helped me to be less anxious and to know this is how I can start my day, but better, these are the tools I can use to help me better prepare for a day of learning and not have such anxiety that I'm dealing with throughout the day. So that's gonna kind of put it in a capsule for me. I'm anxious to see where this journey is gonna take us in Humble. And I just encourage all of you to please uh, rely upon Jen and her staff at IHT to, to help you along your journey. Thank you all today for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Helen. And Eric, were there any final questions? I'll let you wrap it up and um, just sort of finish on any questions that we may have up until this point. Uh, Jen, there was one question, but I responded privately to that person, and we're going to talk about that offline. Uh, but otherwise, there were 
uh, not any general questions. And just as far as the wrap up on my end, um, the heart rate monitors, as uh, Joe Dixon told me, uh, Pooter School District in Fort Collins, for her, it's a game changer. She said it's like having another instructor in the class. So just something to consider as you are looking for grants to apply for. And as you apply for grants, um, don't get discouraged if you don't get it the first time around. Mm -hmm. When we apply, applied for the PEP grant, it took us four times. First three times we got turned down. Uh, and then we just took the feedback each time. It was a long process. We went back at it. We applied again. We applied again. We finally got the PEP grant and we ended up getting three of those. So it just takes a lot of persistence. And then uh, my last thought is just in your, uh, a real key is in your district, develop those relationships, start the conversation, and be an advocate for physical education and health. Thank you all, and thank you all for joining us. We look forward to working with you in the coming weeks and months.